So at the end of it all, you know, I think stuff's really about to pop off. But he pulls up. I look at him. He looks back at me crazy. I'm like, oh, God. But in the end, nothing bad happened. I just learned you never call a moose a buffalo. It won't end well. But thanks. You guys have been great. I've been Lamy. Thanks, guys. One more round of applause for Lamy. Okay, our last talent of the evening is a very special one. Some of you may have heard her story already, but you haven't heard it from her like this. Please welcome to the stage, Kay Conway, performing her poem, Holler Days. Holidays are here and families at our house this year. Home filled with such cheer and jokes broadcasting clear. What a wonderful time to be near. The kids jingle belling while my parents are telling embarrassing stories of mine. While I sit in bed with this cold in my head that's keeping me away from good times. Holla days. Grandma and Grandpa are holiday vets, while Aunt Jane and Aunt Lisa share photos of pets. Uncle Benji and Cable play cards at the table with the uncle that I've never met or even heard of. As I walk past the kitchen, he says, hey little kid, I'm your uncle and my name is Jeff. He said, I remember when you were like fresh out the womb and I knew you'd be beautiful to him. But now you got curves like a woman. And I thought that you wouldn't. What are you? Only like 10? No, I'm 16. The next day, the family goes out to the park. And I stay behind because I'm sick. My head is still pounding and my body's still aching. And all around, I feel like shit. I've taken my medicine and start to feel drowsy. It's time for a post-coma nap. When my door gets cracked open, I thought I was alone. My uncle Jeff enters my bed and said, is this really happening to me? He says, you just need something to take your mind off of it. He reaches to touch me and I jump out of bed. He snatches me back and I hit my head on the bed frame. I, I holler. Good days. One final blow, I'm knocked out cold. I wake up in chains, paralyzed by the pain of betrayal. My family returns. And my mother comes to see me. I still can't move. She sits on my bed and asks how I'm feeling. And I reply, Good. Do I tell her will she believe me? I'm the black sheep of this family. They'll think I want attention if I mention that my uncle is a rapist. What did I do to deserve this? It's my fault? No, it's not. But I didn't know that then. So I packed all my bags and I moved in with a friend. I was only 16. Going on 30. Robbed of my innocence and blaming myself. My mother would beg me to come back home. But I couldn't. Because Uncle Jeff now lived there. I went from man to man, trying to find comfort and protection. Fell and broken, just trying to find my next direction. All the while, I was just furthering my dissension. Until one morning, after a beating from my last boyfriend, I looked in the mirror and said, never again. So I packed my bags and I found some dignity too. 
I made my way out the door and my path to a new. I made my way out the city and my way up the ladder. I made my way anywhere if it mattered to me because my happiness is all that mattered to me. I kept in touch with my family, but I didn't pass by. Uncle Jeff had not moved, but I was preoccupied. My free time was in the gym. I learned confidence there. I went from running on treadmills to fighting unfair. I trained and I trained for every moment that came. For the gym was my therapy that kept me sort of sane. Now the season is back and my mind more intact. I thought to spend time with my family. I know my parents were like that. It was an amazing time to see my nephews and nieces so big. Aunt Jane was now married and Aunt Lisa had kids. Uncle Benji and Cable still playing cards at the table. And Grandma and Grandpa moved on to the stable. I was staying in a hotel this holiday night for the side of my bed brought memories of fright. I bid my family adieu and then I went on my way. But my parents continually begged me to stay. I got to my hotel and I entered my room. I quickly then showered and turned on the news. When a knock on the door started me to the core. And then a voice that I feel like I heard once before. Front desk concierge is a visitor here. It's your mother and she says it's an emergency, dear. I jump out of bed and I unlock the latch. I open the door and get shoved to my back. And in the doorway, a familiar face. Seems like Uncle Jeff followed from my family's place. He shut the door behind him with the confidence mark. Because in his mind, he knew that his own moves would work. But I was ready for this moment. I've been training for years. So much so, that I really didn't feel any fear. He put his finger to his mouth and warned me not to scream. But in my mind, I was telling him the same thing. He grabbed me by my neck and tried unbuckling his pants. So I locked in the choke of my very first chance. He panicked and I can see fear in his eyes. So I squeezed harder and whispered, this is what it feels like to die. I blacked out in rage and I don't remember what happened. I found myself in the courtroom with Judge Willis Patton. The gavel struck wood and a conviction was made. Justice was served in the courtroom that day. But that still doesn't change all the scars that I've gotten. The pain that I felt and my heart that's still rotten. But my hopes are that this story hits you in profound ways so that you will never have to holler in a daze. Thank you.